Hey everybody, Josh here with another hopefully interesting episode. Uh, I brought my microscope because you guys seem to love when I use the microscope and I have to say, I really, <laughs> I really always have fun playing with this thing. Um, our topic today, and I'm not quite sure how to phrase this or how to think about it, but it's can we please stop saying chain stretch? Can we please stop saying chain stretch? Please. Um, chain where? Chain, I don't know, what, what should we call it? Tell me in the comments what you think we should call it. Um, I just know this is one we get all the time in our inbox and I see it in comments in our YouTube, in Adam Karen at Zero Friction's YouTube. Um, forever we've said chain stretch because you know you hang a chain that is used and it will be longer than it was when it was new. And the problem with saying stretch is that so many people think that it's actually, you know, the, the plates in the side of the chain here are stretching, like it's elongating due to, you know, the incredible torque that you put into the drivetrain. Sorry, that's not it, you know, but I, I have people all the time saying, oh, you know, I hear the Olympic track athletes can stretch a chain in, you know, like 200 kilometers. Well, that's not how that works, and and so I want to talk to you guys about that. But I think also in understanding how a chain stretches, or let's let's start saying where. I'll make a deal with you. I'll say where, you say where. If you have a better word, put it in the comments, and maybe we'll try to change the lingo here. But th there's nothing stretching about the chain. You know, the side plates uh, under extreme load. You know, maybe you get a couple microns of elongation, um, but it's generally going to be in that plastic region. It's going to come back after it's unloaded. The actual elongation of the chain when you hang it is coming from where at the pin uh, and at the bushing that the pin rides in. And so let's let's really look up close at, you know, how a chain works and kind of what parts are there doing what. And hopefully from there we can kind of create a better mental model for all of us as to what this uh, this chain wear elongation thing actually is coming from. Um, and then I think once you learn that, you'll also have a better mental model for how some of the lubricants in the market uh, work and, and why others don't, even when m maybe they have a mental model that makes it really seem like they could or should work. Okay, so let's get into this. We will use our trusty microscope. So um, let me turn on my screen. Uh, Recording. There we go. Okay, so here, let me get my microscope kind of out at a higher level here. Let's get it focused. Okay, so this is a very nicely worn uh, SRAM PC1051 chain that I picked up at uh, one of our local bike shops, Bike Line in uh, Broad Ripple. Indiana bike line. Thank you for finding me a chain that has this amazing amount of wear on it. Now, one of the things that's cool about this chain, uh, it's a 10 speed chain. It's on a bike that was about seven years old. Um, but the bike, because it had a computer on it, uh, old school cycle computer, we know only had about 2,200 miles. So um, this chain is worn over 1% on a 2,200 mile chain. And so that tells us that it was either not being lubricated, um, it was being lubricated with a really bad lubricant, or it was being used to ride in really terrible conditions. I'll say from the condition of the rest of the bike, as a 10-speed, um, you know, SRAM, double-tap road bike, uh, dirty in the sense of, like, it probably wasn't cleaned, but a couple times in its life. Um, but when I got this chain, it was fully black, and it took about an hour of ultrasonic cleaning and different chemicals because... It was lubricated with a polymer uh, style lubricant. And those you would think of as like a Dumont Tech. Um, some of the, the synthetics, I think Finish Line has a product there. Um, what makes these interesting and what makes them really stand out when you go to clean a, a worn chain is that the, the polymer is actually dried to be like a plastic that you can scrape off. And you can actually scrape it with a blade and it'll peel back um, as a plastic. And so the best way to get it off is to soak it in a solvent that dissolves plastic, which we've done here. Um, 
one of the problems with polymer lubricants is if they're not replenished frequently, the dirt and the stuff that gets in there gets dried into the plastic. So you almost have like this dried polymer film with all the dirt in it, essentially just like sandpaper, right? You think sandpaper is a paper with a little bit of glue uh, as a bonding agent, and then it's coated with sand so that the sand kind of sticks in the glue, and now you have sandpaper. That's what happens when you get dirt and dust in polymer lubricants that are allowed to dry. So uh, you know, clean your chain and relubricate it uh, more frequently. Okay, let's look at our, uh, our microscope here. So parts of the chain. So you see my chain here, I'll flip it up. So you've got your um, outer plate and the outer plate here is riveted or has the pin riveted to it. So let me get center. So this piece and this piece are essentially one. And you look at as I articulate the inner link you see the pin is not spinning, okay? So what is spinning, you've got your inner link plate, one here and one here. Let's get our pointer back, one here and one there. I'm oh, sorry, gosh, I'm really screwing this up, one here. So we've got our inner link plates here and here, and then this is the roller, these are rollers. This is called roller chain because up until, I don't know, I think late 1800s, the chain was just the inner plate, the outer plate, um, and the inner plate you'll see in a minute is formed in to make a bushing for the pin to ride on. In engineering parlance, that pin is referred to as the journal. So you have a journal and a bushing. We didn't have the roller there and the chains and the gears were out faster. And so the addition of the roller is an additional rolling element um, really helped with chain wear. I think this was 1880s. Uh, I'm sure somebody's going to look it up and drop the correct date below because I'm just going from memory here, but a uh, huge step forward. But one of the things that I think we need to talk about is why chain is so efficient or, or the reason that chain is so efficient is that it is not sliding friction that is happening inside the, the chain here. It is actually rolling, uh, rolling movement, rolling friction that's happening. Um, if it were sliding friction, the chain would be terribly inefficient. And so I've got my big mental model creator here. So if this is the bushing and this is the journal, right, or the pin, I think all of us think that the one is sliding on the other, but it's not. What's actually happening is, and if you shrink this down, right, so I'll, I'll artificially shrink this down and use this, it's, the two are rolling against each other and they're able to roll against each other um, so that your contact in here is a line contact, okay, and it's rolling up and back. That is so much more efficient than if it were sliding. And the reason this is important, one, it's what allows us to achieve, you know, 96, 97, 98% drivetrain efficiencies with a chain. Um, but also, I think it helps us create the mental model here. You know, you'll look at lubricants and they'll say, you know, have particles that act like ball bearings. When you think of, you know, if, you're, if your model is sliding friction, right, ball bearings make sense. If your model is rolling friction, and it's hard to, do, it's hard to do here, is rolling friction like this, well, now all of a sudden, a, you know, a ball bearing, uh, here, let's, I don't have a ball bearing, but I'll put this little chain pin, you know, that's a, a very efficient round rolling object, but it essentially just serves an impediment. And, a round ball shaped uh, additive in a lubricant will not act like a ball bearing in a roller chain. It will actually act like a pebble in front of your roller blade wheel and it will want to stop that motion and what happens is you either crush the spherical particle or you drive it into um, either, either the journal or the bushing. Okay, so that's why all of the best lubricant additives tend to be platelets because they lay down flat and they form, you know, sort of like a dragon skin of hard protective surface that the pin can roll on against the bushing. Okay, so let's think about that for our mental model. So we're back here. So you've got the roller can roll, okay? This guy can roll against the outside of the bushing and then the pin is rolling on the inside of the bushing. So what does the bushing look like? So this is an inner chain plate and you can see this is from the same chain. So you can see the surface for uh, wear here. Now this is a sliding friction and this is a friction that might benefit from having little ball bearing type particles to help uh, the, you know the two surfaces slide against each other. 
But you see that when this part is made, the bushing is actually stamped into the metal and it protrudes out. Sorry, this is harder than it looks. Okay, and it protrudes out here. And so the roller of the chain rides on the outside of this and the pin rides on this inner surface of this bushing. Okay, so here's my pin and here's my inner bushing, oops, my pin and my inner bushing face. Um, that's where the rolling happens. Now, let's look at our pin. This is the pin that came out of this chain. And I'm gonna really try to zoom in here. Okay, this is the pin, and I'm gonna show you guys something really cool. So what, what is happening uh, when the chain wears and gets longer is that you are taking essentially what was a tight interface like this, and you are wearing away the pressure face of this and the rolling friction becomes sliding friction because now this is no longer round. And that's why chain wear is not linear. It starts slowly and then once you start to make the pin non-round, then the motion becomes sliding instead of rolling or there's a roll that transitions to a slide. Um, if you have no lubricant, that's what you hear is the squeak. The squeak is that little transition where it, it's kind of like a stick slip and it you know goes from, from rolling to sliding. And so essentially this guy, right, has say a thousandth or two of play. You know, if here, we'll get, this one's probably smaller, imagine this, right? Now you've got this play here. That is essentially what's happening. And so let's look at our, our pin. This is the non loaded side and watch what happens when I, when I spin it. This guy's magnetic, so he will give us a little bit of a fit. Look at our pressure side here. Look at that. You can see that the two bushings of the bushing of each inner plate has worn a groove and I've measured it. The groove here is about 0 0.08, 0 0.09, almost point, almost a tenth of a millimeter deep. And you, and so you imagine that now that play right between this guy and this guy has gone from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 millimeters. And so each pin can now displace by almost a tenth of a millimeter. Like I said, this is a super worn chain. It displaces, and that's why you get the chain elongating. Again, the side plates, um, inner and outer, same length they've always been. If you measure center to center on the pins, they're all gonna measure on center, half inch, half inch pitch chain. But you hang the chain and what you're seeing is the stack up of all of these ground away inner pins um, that look like this guy. The other thing you will see, and it's, it's much harder to see and to measure, um, but we can certainly kind of try to point it out on this guy, is that the bushing itself is also no longer round. It's becoming a little bit elongated, it's becoming more of a slot uh, than a circle because it too is being worn away by, you know, the dirt and the grit and that, that sliding friction. Um, and so this is why it's so important to catch the chain before it gets past that 0.5% wear mark, right? Up until then, you're starting to, things are starting to fall apart, but they're still round enough that most of your uh, your movements inside the chain are still rolling friction and not sliding friction. Once it transitions to sliding, all bets are off and it just quickly goes to snot. Um, Adam at Zero Friction has some great graphics on this, but I mean, it's kind of like an exponential, like it wears a little bit and then it just goes terrible. That's what happens once things are non-round and you're sliding. Of course, good lubricants help this, good lubricant additives uh, that make the surface of the metal harder than the metal itself. Um, can really play into uh, helping with this, but really just keeping the chain clean and well lubricated will go a long way in doing this. So the last thing I wanted to get to, and you can kind of see again in my, my SRAM chain here that is just mega worn, is you can actually see this and watch. So I'll push, pull, and let me pull my microscope up and we'll get a higher point of view. 
with a different uh, um, focus in, and you'll be able to see it across a couple of links. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to pin it with this hand. Okay, I'm going to pin it with this finger, and then I'm going to pull and watch the elongation. See that? That's the tenth of a millimeter, and you see it's doing it at each pin, and that's the stack up. You know, you can also see, look how big the side plate wear has gotten from that, um, uh, from the interfaces there being worn away. And that also uh, is going to really affect your shifting performance, uh, you know, of the chain. But honestly, by the time it gets this bad, you've probably smoked your cogs and your chain ring and everything has to be replaced. So, you know, please don't let it get this bad. I keep coming back to 2,200 miles, right? We've, we've got hot wax chains that have 10 plus thousand miles on them and still measure, you know, a tenth of a percent wear. Uh, I know my, my e-bike just crossed 2,500 miles with a 500-watt Bosch e-bike motor. I ride it to work every day, waxing the chain. 2,500 miles, there is no measurable wear on that chain at all uh, because it's properly maintained with a good hot wax lubricant. So there you go. Chain wear, not stretch. Let's please stop saying stretch. What questions do you have? I'm sure... There's a ton because I'm trying to cover in 15 minutes something that's pretty complicated. Um, please drop your questions, comments below. Let me know what you think. What else would you like to see me uh, look at the microscope with? So, I don't know, drop that in below too. I think there's all sorts of things we can learn, uh, you know, how the world works, how things work at the microscopic level when we have a cool little uh, microscope to play with. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you're thinking. We'll see you next time.